So Shelly, we know that customizing your resume is very important, including accomplishment statement, so that it's aligned with what jobs you're applying. As you read countless resumes over the years, what top three or four tips you have for job seekers when applying in 2024? Okay, so things that I feel are really important. Mm -hmm. One is I want everyone to read the job description that is posted or is given to you. Mm -hmm. Read it once, read it twice, read it three times. Many people do not do this. It's amazing. Mm. And so they have no idea what the job is about. And if they have no idea what the job is about, then they don't know how to tailor their resume for the yeah, job. For sure. Okay? And it goes even further than that, because as a recruiter, I interviewed a lot of people mm -hmm. and you know, I would ask them questions about their interest in the job, what they know about it. And oftentimes people couldn't tell me. Oh, they are okay? not prepared. Because they weren't prepared. They hadn't read the mm -hmm. job description. So that's really, really important. A second thing I would talk about is where you can, I would put metrics around your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Well, it's important because it provides context for the reader. Yes. They'll understand. Did you increase sales a little, maybe a half a percent? Did you increase sales 5% or did you, you know, yeah. do fantastic and did 25% increase? Yeah. You know, that's important to show that you have value. Yeah. And so I know many people struggle mm -hmm. with, how to do, come up with metrics yes. because some jobs just aren't really set up that way. Yeah. Well, one of the ways to think about is every job has a purpose, right? They don't just pay you to do nothing. There are yeah. some things that you are expected to do. All right. So that for that is, well, how does what you do impact the business? Mm -hmm. it, what is correlated to what you do? So, that is, so think about, well, why is this important? Who does this impact? Yeah. In what ways does it impact? Think about that, and that will help you with metrics. And do you think that, you know, at the bot at the top, which is summary of qualification, and then we have all the duties, and then education, volunteering. Do you think that a lot of emphasis should be done on the summary part, and of course, including the keywords so that they pass ATS. What are your thoughts about that? I like a summary, but remember, summary should be an overview, mm -hmm. right? Most recruiters are going to go straight to the experience section because mm -hmm. they have to look to see if you're qualified. Yeah. And that's where they're generally going to see that. Yeah. So they're going to read that very, very closely. But then they will go to the summary. Mm -hmm. Right, because they want to get an overview of who you are, what you can do. So I would start writing your experience section and then take what are the most important parts of that and then emphasize that in your professional summary. Yeah. I think doing it that way makes more sense than what most people do, which is they start writing their professional summary yeah. and then work on their experience. And uh, we know that a lot of times recruiters will check a resume and then they will go on LinkedIn just to kind of know more the person, you know, totally everything. And we know that on the resume, it customized maybe two pages, but on LinkedIn, they can add more. So what do you think about how they should differentiate? Of course, I tell them at least same title, same accomplishment, but you can add more on LinkedIn. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I think LinkedIn is a great opportunity to fill in a lot of the gaps from your resume because you can't write everything there is to know about a job. Yeah. You can't. There's just only so much room. Yeah. So you're really giving the... Um, Briefest of details, you're deciding what is most important for that particular audience. Mm -hmm. But because 
LinkedIn gives you so much more in terms of character length in all the areas. You get a great opportunity then to talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So as an example, in your experience section, you can talk about maybe some of the challenges you faced or maybe how you made a difference from when you started in a position to where you are now. Yeah, These are kind of narratives that really um, give more insight into the person, but you just really can't fully discuss that mm. in a resume. Yeah. The other thing is your about section. It is a great place to talk about kind of your story. Yes. You know, how did you get to where you are? What are you known for? Mm -hmm. What skills are do people come to you all the time because they know you do that the best? Yeah. You can talk about that in a narrative there that, you know, you really can't do on a resume. Yeah. Those are great tips, Sherry. Thank you very much. Again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any more tips, you can leave them below. And tune in next time for another great question with Shelly.